Hello and welcome to this tutorial, which is about WAN connectivity by using analog modems. So analog modems are not as popular as they used to be. They've been replaced with many other WAN connectivity options. However, they are still a viable option. So that's why they're important to know and you will come across them or actually have to use them from time to time. So we're going to take a look at how an analog modem will enable two computers to communicate directly to each other. And we'll also take a look at how analog modems are used to connect to the internet, to get internet access. In both of these scenarios, the analog modem uses the PSTN in order to get connectivity. That's the medium it uses. So if you have a phone line, a plain old telephone service, then you can use an analog modem for, for connectivity. So almost anywhere you go, a modem is going to enable you to get online, as long as there's a phone line. So we're going to take a look at the physical setup of using an analog modem with your computer and how it connects to the telecom provider. And then we're going to drill down a bit into some detail on exactly how analog modems work and how the signaling uh, transmits data. It's important to understand this stuff. All right, so with that said, let's get started. We'll begin by looking at how two PCs can use analog modems to create a connection between them. And so here we have two PCs, we'll call this A and this B, and each one has an analog modem. Now, analog modems do not have to be external to a PC, and in fact, most days, most times today, you can buy a card and that card will be inside the computer itself. However, for illustration purposes, I've separated here to more easily explain what happens. Okay, so we have two PCs, two modems, and each location has a phone line. You might have heard the term POTS line before. That stands for plain old telephone service. It's just a landline that you would normally connect your telephone to. Well, each location here has a POTS line. And what happens, quite simply, is that PCA sends a digital signal to the modem. And it's the modem's job to convert that signal from digital to analog. And then it sends that analog signal into the PSTN. Now keep in mind, a POTS line is normally used for a telephone. And that's why uh, a modem has to convert the digital signal into an analog signal, because the PSTN is expecting to get an analog signal. So. You may recall from another tutorial that the PSTN is a circuit switched technology as opposed to a packet switched. So quite literally, a point to point connection will be established through the PSTN for these two computers. And the PSTN is going to end up sending that analog signal to the other modem. And then on this side, this modem will take that analog signal convert it to a digital signal and send it to, to PCB so that PCB can actually understand it. And that's the overall process of what happens. And of course this happens in the other direction as well when PCB wants to send information to PCA. So modems convert digital signals into analog signals and then vice versa. They convert analog signals back to digital signals. And keep in mind the PSTN, the phone company, is expecting an analog electrical signal because that's what a voice phone call normally is. And the telecom, the PSTN provider, it doesn't really know if this is a voice call or data being sent through. It's just expecting an analog signal. Now this signal represents bits of information, little bits, little ones and zeros that is being transmitted between A and B. So now let's take a look, a closer look, at the analog signal itself to figure out how exactly that analog signal, which is normally used to carry voice, is being used here to transmit ones and zeros. So the analog signal has to represent all of the information that the PC is sending, sending in digital format, a digital signal, to the modem. So when the modem converts it, and sends the analog signal, this signal is going to be changed rapidly. And each one of these changes is going to represent the information that is sent in the digital signal. So if you think 
about ones and zeros being sent along in a digital signal? Well, in order for the analog signal to transmit or to represent that same information, it's going to be changed, or in other words, modulated very quickly, and each one of those modulations represents some of that information. And so when this modem receives it, it's going to be interpreting all those different changes to mean little bits of information, ones and zeros. And then it goes ahead and creates the digital signal and sends it over to PCB over here. Now, how many times can you change the signal? In other words, do you change it once per second? a hundred times per second. Well, that depends on how much information you want to send along. So if you change it 100 times per second, that means you're sending 100 bits per second. If you want to go ahead and send something higher, let's say 9600 bits per second, that means every one 9600th of a second, you're making a change to the signal in order to represent a different bit. So this is the rate, or the bit rate, of a modem. Now this signal itself, speaking of bit rates and how much information it can send across at one time, this type of signal is known as an asynchronous signal. So modems will try to operate at the same speed of each other, but they will not actually change their bit rate in order to match the other modem. Other types of connectivity that we'll talk about are known as synchronous but modems are asynchronous, okay? So they're not necessarily on the same page. Now, modem is short for modulate and demodulate. M-O and D-E-M. Because what we're doing here is when we're sending, let's say, in this direction, PCA's modem is going to modulate and PCB's modem is going to demodulate that analog signal. Okay? So modem is just a shortened phrase for what's actually taking place here. Modulate and demodulate. The other type of connectivity via an analog modem is internet access. And so here we have a single PC with a modem, but this time instead of connecting to uh, another PC, we're going to actually connect to the modem owned and operated by your telecom provider. And by doing that, we can then go ahead and surf the web. So quite simply what happens is, the telecom provider has a bunch of modems, many, many modems. It's usually referred to as a modem bank or a bank of modems. And the home user initiates a connection, and it's referred to as dialing in because you're presented with a phone number that's owned and operated by the PSTN provider. And so you dial into that phone number, which is like the address of the modem bank. And then once you're connected, you're then connected through that connection to the routers of the PSTN provider, of your telecom provider, where you can then go ahead and surf the web or do whatever you want online. So nothing else changes that we talked about. This is still a digital signal and this is still an analog signal, but we're simply connecting to the modems owned and operated by the telecom provider as opposed to a single PC somewhere else. And then through that connection, we can get access to the internet. Now this type of connectivity model isn't too popular these days because analog modems are limited in how fast they can transmit the data, the bits per second that we just talked about. So compared to other broadband internet options today, modems are not too favorable. However, it is still an option. Another drawback is you cannot use your phone line for an analog modem and a phone call at the same time. So if you're on the phone, you cannot use your analog modem, and likewise, if you're connecting your analog modem to your phone line, you cannot have the phone itself connected to it for a regular voice call at the same time. So it's a bit of a drawback, you have to make a decision. Okay? All right, well, let's summarize what we covered. We know that there are internal and external modems, and more likely than not, modems used today will be internal to the PC. Now, a modem's job is to translate between digital and analog signals, and also in the other direction, from analog to digital signals. 
And we now know that the word modem itself actually stands for modulate and demodulate. And the modulation means the change in the signal. And these modulations actually represent bits of information. Now, how often we change the signal, how often we modulate it, is known as the bit rate, bits per second, or the number of modulations per second. Also, we talked about how we can use modems for a point-to-point -point connection, say, between two PCs, or we can use an analog modem for internet connectivity. However, modems these days are not too popular because they're relatively slow to other types of connectivity options, and you can't use your phone line for a, an analog modem connection and a phone call at the same time. It's either one or the other. Okay, so that is it. That is the WAN connectivity by using analog modems. Thanks for watching.